Hey guys. Let me share my screen. And let's get everyone. All righty. So the first thing that we want to do when you sit down for the day is kind of figure out are you in decreasing volume mode or not? And so what we want to do is start at the highest ATR value for the trend, which is here, and we look for any further instances of... So the first thing uh, the first thing we want to do when we when we start for the day is work out if we're taking mean reversion or trend following setups. So here's how we do it. We, first of all, find the highest ATR value in the trend, which is right here, 193 at value here. And after that, we look for any instances of the lowest close in the trend after that. So here's our highest ATR value. Here's the lowest close in the trend. So here we have the lowest close in the trend and an uptick. Here we have the lowest close in the trend. And is ATR in an uptick or a downtick? 192 to 192, that's flat. That's not a downtick. So we're not in decreasing volatility mode. So we're free to take mean reversion setups. And we're in a downtrend on the five and we're on a downtrend on the 10. So as unlikely as it looks, this is kind of a good mean reversion setup if it plays out. Like it's probably a bit strong to be thinking about mean reversion, but um, let's just see how it plays out and take the setups as they come and, and, uh, and fuck it. Let's see what happens. So we have a touch of the upper Bollinger. To complete our setup, we either need a shooting star or, or a lower close then a higher close. Okay, we cannot go into decreasing volatility up while we are trending down on the five and trending down on the 10. That's, that's an important thing to know. So what I propose to do today is, is let's settle in and, and uh, probably take a trade or so. And then I'm gonna open the floor to questions and we'll, uh, we'll see what people are struggling with and I'll teach a bit and keep an eye out for setups and See how it plays out, answer any questions that you have about anything, really. My man Jihan, welcome brother. How are you, man? All right, so to take a setup, we need to have a touch of the upper Bollinger followed by a lower close and then a higher close without breaking this high, the higher the Bollinger band touch. That's our setup. And we need confirming evidence on the five minute and confirming evidence on the 10 minute. Now we have confirming evidence because we're trending down according to our mechanical definition, starting here on the five and starting here on the 10. And we're still trending down. 
So it's worth noting that after you saw this bar, this looked like, oh, fuck off, it's going up, right? Like, I don't want to play mean reversion. But mean reversion is nearly always the high, uh, the high probability play. And so now, if we get a short set up here, while the five and the 10 minute are looking like this, it's probably going to be a pretty decent play. Right, anyone got any questions so far? Good morning, Scott. Stefan, how are you? Hey, Stefan, how are you, bro? I'm doing well. Scott, the only um, area I'm really struggling right now on is the five and the 10 minute and defining trending. Okay. This In other really, words- This is really the, a good thing to do. Yeah, because yesterday I got killed. I took all exact trades on the two, but the five and 10 were trending down. So I'm getting a little confused as to when to All use right. that to determine which direction. Okay. So if you're going to use confirming evidence as uh, actually, it looks like we're going to get a setup this part. So uh, um, would you mind if I put this on on pause for two minutes and then we'll uh, and then we'll come back to it? Absolutely, please. All right. So we have a setup here. If the target for this. To be a setup, this has to either close as a shooting star or be a higher close. Higher than what? Higher than the bar before. This close is, is 345. This next close so far is 347. We'll see how it closes. We're going to keep an eye on the time. You can see up here in the top right-hand corner of the screen, my time is 306.38. So we've got a minute and 20 seconds in the bar. It looks like it's going to be a setup. So it's probably time for me to start prepping an order. Workspace. And of course, okay, this probably isn't going to be a setup, but but I'll prep it anyway. So uh, the entry is the nearest half pip or full pip below this low. The low is 34 pips, so the nearest half pip below that would be 33 and a half. The stop loss would be the nearest half pip above 37 and a half. So that's 38. So stop loss 38, entry 33 and a half. That's a four and a half pip stop, a four and a half pip R value. And we have to check is a five pip target, which is that times 1.1, is it lower than this bar here? So an, an entry from 33, uh, sorry, 33.5. Minus five, it's 28.5. And the low here is 28.5 exactly. So this is a valid setup and I have to place this order. And excuse me for a minute, I've been slack and having my platform set up properly. So let me just rush and get this order placed. So, uh, And it's worth noting that because our confirming, oh, okay, that order is placed, but it looks like we're going to have to replace this order for here. Okay. 
Okay. And 10 seconds to go. We need to prep a new order here. Um, the entry is 35 and the stop loss is 38. So that would be three for three and a half. And sorry, three, four, six. Placing order. And as soon as it breaks this high, it's off the table. So the high is 378. The highest 375, that order is cancelled. So um, before I come back to Stefan, the thing I want to point out is that it's very common to place orders and never get a trade. So we had to place this order, didn't get filled. We had to place another order here, and the whole thing is cancelled once we break the, the high of this bar. So um, if the market was going to go down, was probably going to go down here. It didn't happen. The whole thing starts again here. So we, uh, so we have to keep an eye on it. Um, and we'll see what happens here. And then I'll come back to, I'll come back to Stephen. All right, Stefan, so let's talk about our, uh, our definition of trending a little bit. Okay. Um, anyone who's watching, just let me know if we get another setup. So that's the two minute chart. Let's look at the 10 minute chart because I can see where you're getting confused. So for us, we need a mechanical definition of trending. We can't be relying on my opinion and your opinion about what a trend is and what it isn't. So let's look at some examples. The rule is it's a two-stage process to start trending. We need, first of all, a touch of the, a touch of the Bollinger. And secondly, we have a single candle with a higher high and a higher close than we've had so far. This example is perfectly straightforward. We start trending there. Where it's not so simple is where it doesn't happen in that in that first go. So here we have a touch of the upper Bollinger. Here we have a single candle with a higher high, but not a higher close. So now to become trending, we need a single candle with a higher high than this bar and a higher close than this bar, which happens right here. See the same thing here. We have a touch of the lower Bollinger. We have a new lower low, but not a lower close. So now to start trending, we need a lower low than this bar and a lower close than the cl lowest close we've had so far, which is 271. Here we've got a close of 270. So now to be trending, we need a lower close than this bar and a lower low than this bar. And here we don't have that. So this never starts trending down. We, we've been through this one and let's look at this one because it, it's a little bit weird. So we touched the lower Bollinger. We have a new lower low, but not a lower close. And we need a single bar with a lower low than this candle and a lower close than this candle, which we get here. We start trending down here. What, do, what stops us trending? What stops us trending is one of three things. Thing one, we're trending up from here, from the close of this bar, touch of the opposite Bollinger. So we're trending down. We just stop trending up here on the 10. Make sense? Thing two is going 20 bars without making a new high or low. Coming on, Scott. You got a bit of a setup coming on. All right, man. Thank you. All righty. And that's a pretty decent setup too. Okay, so what do I like about this setup? We know that extremes of both low and high volatility are unsustainable and This, this in much, much uh, range in a two minute candle is everyone getting along at once, which is usually indication of people following in. Okay, 
So what do we need to take this setup short? We need a touch of the Bollinger, we need a lower close, and then we need a higher close without breaking the high of this bar. So we keep an eye on the time, we're at 3.15 and 17 seconds. This bar obviously rolls over at 60 seconds. So in 30 seconds, we're gonna have a new bar and it looks like we'll be one bar away from having a setup potential. Now, one of the things I'm always harping on about is the difference between good traders of this system and average traders of the system is a willingness to prep orders that are never going to be placed. Um, really, if, if you're looking for one secret, that's it. Howdy. So what was that um, secret to place pending orders? So the secret is, is the really the biggest secret of being able to do this in real time is two things. Thing one is keeping track of the time, how many, how many seconds to go in the bar. Um, if you lose track of that, you'll find yourself really under pressure, time pressure, which doesn't work out well. The second thing is, if there's even the remotest possibility that you're going to have to be in a trade, you prep the order on your platform in advance. And uh, and it's kind of annoying because you might um, you might like we prepped two orders before and and none of them were actually placed, right? So you might have to do work that you don't get paid for or that you don't take any, take any trades for. Um, but typically you'll probably place two or, two or three orders for every one that actually executes. And uh, just a willingness to do that is huge. Right, gotcha. All right. So we need a higher close, which we may have. So now um, it's unlikely, but we may have, so we got to prep that order. So our entry price here would be the nearest half pip below one. If you look at here, you can see the low up here, 1.21386. Now, if you allow yourself to think in terms of that big long string of numbers, you're going to get really confused and no one can do, well, someone could, but I'm not smart enough to do the maths in my head. So the way I do it is I only look at the last three numbers. If you look at the low here is 386, which I read in my head is 38.6 pips, because that's what it means. The nearest half pip below 38.6 is 38 and a half pips. The stop loss would be the nearest half pip above the high, which is 43 and a half. So 38, so 38 and a half pips to 43 and a half pips is five pips. So I would prep an order now, just in case, based on, well, actually, I won't now because it's gone down a bit. Um, but if it looks even remotely like I could get, like I can get a setup, I'll be prepping an order and having it ready to go. This is really quite an appealing setup too. So when you mention um, setting up orders, mm -hmm. you, you don't mean a pending order. You mean putting all the data into 
Yeah, the, I, put, I, I put putting in like the the uh, entry price and the stop loss and and the position size into my trading platform, getting it ready. Right. To get, um, ready to press the button if ready to press the button. Right. And there's an additional thing I do when I, the way I, I like the way I you don't have to do it this way, but the way I prefer to do it is to set up my trading platform. And most trading platforms have a an option to, to be a last, to have like a last confirmation. Like, are you really sure you want to trade for real money? Um, and I like to leave that on, even though most people like to take it off. And then I'll prep the order and, and, and hit go, knowing that there'll be like, a, are you really sure confirmation? And I count down like 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and then I, and then I go, yeah, I, I really am. Okay, so right now we need to check, is this a setup? We've got confirming evidence on the five. We've got confirming evidence on the 10. The only thing is it's not a setup if the target is further away than the lowest low in 25 bars. So we need to check is the distance from here, which is uh, 35 and a half less 43 and a half, uh, which is eight, uh, is eight and a half, um, 35 minus 8.5 is 26 and a half, which is too far. So that is no setup. Now, what I want to point out is that let's find another setup. Like here, we have a setup touch of the Bollinger, lower close shooting star completes the setup. This range setup going short here, stop loss here, which we had earlier today gives us a target of here, perfectly reasonable target. And what's immediately apparent about it is that you don't have to be right. You don't have to predict anything to hit that target. So at any one time, if we look at the market as it's as it stood in real time like here, there's three things that can happen. It can be a new uptrend, could be a new uptrend, could easily happen. Like I couldn't say that's not a new uptrend. It could be a, it could totally reverse here and be a downtrend, or it could just be a fuck around in a trading range. Now, of those three options, if you think about we're targeting a win rate of about two thirds, so to target that, we really want to have two of those three options covered. Now, with a target of here, if it's just a fuck around trading range, we're going to hit our target. If it's a totally new leg down, downtrend, we're going to hit our target. And if it's an uptrend, we're not going to hit our target. So we've gotten most of the bases covered. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. Um, Jose, this is an interesting question. When you're trending on the two-minute chart, we only look at the, once you're trending, we only look at the ATR value when you make the highest value, the highest ATR value in the trend. So for example, here we start trending. It's the highest ATR value in the trend. So we check that it happened on an uptick or a downtick. You can see ATR went from 230 to 231. So we're still taking mean reversion setups. We've got a new highest close in the trend. So we check it again and we've got a, an uptick in ATR. So we're still taking mean reversion setups. If ever you get the highest uh, highest close in a trend on a downtick in ATR, we flip the script from taking mean reversion setups and then we store trend following setups. So that is, our, that is our clue to go from mean reversion to trend following and back to mean reversion. So we wanna have a dynamic methodology that doesn't rely on my stupid opinion yeah, this looks like a trade, have you? Okay, let's check it out. Okay, we got two minutes to go before. Uh, oh, shit, it's gone. Okay, thank you, Javier. Okay, the entry point is 37. The stop loss is 43 and a half. is 30. Okay. Okay, that's shitty trading for me. 6.5. And let's get it placed. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, order is placed. Now, um, the new bar formed, the low of this bar is 37.9. So the entry point on this new trade would be, when this bar closes, will be 37 and a half. This other entry is 37. So we're supposed to recalculate our position size and move it up half a pip. Um, in, a, in a practical sense, I wouldn't bother for half a pip from six and a half to seven. If it was from three to three and a half, it would be a substantial difference in position size. From six and a half to seven, I just usually say fuck it and just drag the order up rather than, rather than place. Okay, once this trade breaks new highs, we cancel the old trade and it's off the table. So what I wanna point out to you is the requirement when you place a setup of having price break the low of the candle bar before you get in. This saves us from very many losing trades. So if we had have just seen this setup gone, that's a setup I'm gonna jump out. Or I'm gonna jump in short at the close of this bar, we'd be having a terrible time right now. So just the very act of waiting for, um, of waiting for it to confirm waiting for price to do, we think, we think the market's gonna go down, but we're often wrong. So we wait for price to actually do what we think it's gonna do before we bet real money. Um, it, it really simplifies the process. It's the greater part of the edge of this whole thing. Like, it seems like this is some sort of white man magic, but it's really not. Like a lot of it, a significant part of the edge is just that, you know, it's broken the low of a previous candle. So we gotta keep an eye out for the high here. The high is, uh, 31, 30, and now this setup is canceled. So I'll cancel the order. So every time we break the high of the Bollinger touch setup bar, touch of the Bollinger lower closes, higher close, we cancel the order. Uh, Carrie, trend polling, you don't, we don't work on divergences at all. So all we, all we have is two modes. We have decreasing volatility mode on, decreasing volatility might not. Decreasing volatility is, is, an, is an indication that the trend may continue further than we would reasonably expect and that counter trend setups are an edge, are, are, are a negative edge. So we wanna stop trading counter trend setups. We wanna try and trade in the direction of the trend when we're in decreasing volatility mode. How do we go in decreasing volatility mode? Every time we make the highest close in the trend, previous highest close in the trend is here, 425. Here we've got a new highest close in the trend, 428. We check, did it happen on an uptick or a downtick in ATR? You can see that ATR went from 249 to 268. It's an uptick. We're still in mean reversion. Great, what thank you, Scott. Sorry, what I was going to ask, um, what length the ATR is ATR, 14, ATR 14, and uh, and we don't use any if your platform has options to use like moving averages or smoothing or any kind of bullshit, just fuck all that off. Okay, so it looks like we have a setup, but if you look closely, this is not touching the upper Bollinger. The upper Bollinger here is 441 and the high is 428. So we have no mean reversion setup. Um, David, did the touch of the top Bollinger on the five or the 10 invalidate the confirmation? Yes, it did, but it made a new type of confirmation. So this is kind of interesting. We're trending down and we've got a pullback at least to the moving averages. So we have a trend with pullback confirmation all the way up to here. And then we touch the upper Bollinger and now we've got upper Bollinger confirming. So, so what is the difference in practical terms? If we're using trend with pullback confirming evidence, we're going for a 2R target. If we're using Bollinger touch, Bollinger touch confirming evidence, we're going for a 1.1R target. So big difference in output. Good question. Okay, so now we have a touch of the Bollinger.
Hey, Scott. Hey, is it Deepesh or Sharon? Yes. Yeah. Hi. I'm uh, yeah, Deepesh here. Quick question. Uh, what what you said just now, if we have a confirming evidence on Bollinger, Bollinger, we go 1.1 R target. And Correct. the other scenario, what did you mention, please? Okay. So, so let me clarify that. If you have Bollinger, Bollinger confirming evidence, you go 1.1 times your R value and then round it up or down to the nearest half pip. So in a practical terms, that if it's a five pip range, Five times 1.1 is 5.5. Six times 1.1 is 6.6, .6, rounded down to 6.5. So in a practical sense, that means three for three and a half, three and a half for four, four for four and a half, four and a half for five, five for five and a half, five and a half for six, six for six and a half. Pretty easy to do, right? Got if it. we've got confirming evidence of Bollinger trending or trending trending, we go for a two R target, moving stop to break even, at one arm. Now, the reason for that is that even though it, all, all moving stop losses to break even is, is inefficient, it reduces the, it reduces the um, expectancy of nearly all trading systems, um, just because you can get that situation where it pulls back to break even, stops you out, and goes on and becomes a winner. But you, unless you're an algo trader, you really have to do it that way because it's psychologically devastating to watch a trade make 1.9 R and then reverse back and be a one R loser. It just like, it hits you in the feelings so hard. It just feels so unfair. Like, um, I don't know any traders who can put up with that on a regular basis. Got it, got it, thanks. Let me just shut the door open. My, my baby crying, I'm sorry. All right, we have the highest close in the trend. So we got to just do a double check that we're not in decreasing volatility mode. We've got a touch of the upper Bollinger on the five and the 10. We've got a lower close. If this is a higher close, we're on. Unless, if it's a higher close or a shooting star, we're on. We have a minute and a half to go at the bar. So let's just prep an order just in case. So the entry here would be 42 and the stop loss would be 45. So that would be risking three for three and a half. So I happen to know that that is a $1,650,000 position size at $500 hours, um, which is what I'm trading today. And let me just put that in. Just three. Okay, if this set up, breaks the high of this bar, which is 448. So if it's 449 or above, the setup is canceled. And we keep an eye on the time. The other thing that we, that we want to do, which is a trap. Now, the, a very, very common cause of mistakes is you start to see a setup forming and you're like, fuck yeah, we're on. I haven't placed a trade. We've been trading for half an hour, no fucking trades. Like I want it, I want this one. Can anyone see that we're about to go into decreasing volatility mode because we're about to make the highest close in the trend on a downtick in ATR, and that's going to flip us from mean reversion mode to trend following mode. And so one of the very, very common causes of, of mistakes is just being so eager, like I want it, I want this trade. And you take it and you take a trade that doesn't fit the rules just because you're like desperate to get some action. What so the solution for that that I've found is to always do um, a very simple checklist. So this was a setup, my order is prepped, but we've made the highest close in the trend on a downtick in ATR, so we skip this setup. What throws us out of decreasing volatility mode is the, is the most recent pivot too high or the highest ATR value in the trend, which is the same thing here. So we, if we break this ATR value of 273, so if we go 274 or above, an equal 273 value leaves us in decreasing volatility mode. Um, now we're looking for hammer candles touching at least the ADMA. Can I ask um, the period for the Bollinger? 
14, uh, 20 and two, which is the, the standard for everything. Now, you can see that this highest close in the trend throwing us into decreasing volatility mode. We're out of decreasing volatility mode now, because, but so we're backstalking in reversion. But this was a strong indicator that we don't want to go short right here. You can see exactly why. We don't want, if, we, if we just jumped in short here, so that's our setup, touch of the Bollinger Low and touch higher close, we'd be fine. Um, there's always another setup coming. Um, you don't have to go around predicting it, like you just see how it happens. Uh, Kenneth, we're out of DV mode the moment ATR breaks the previous value. You don't have to wait to the high. Um, really good question. And Alex, if the stop loss is looking like only one pip, do you force it to a higher value? You, um, you leave the stop loss where it is, but you change the position sizing for a higher value. So this is kind of interesting, actually. So uh, um, I'll just use the baby pips position size calculator to illustrate. So let's say we're trading $100,000 uh, $100, account, and we're risking 1% of trade. And our stop loss is 1%. Our position size is 100 lots. That's fucking huge. So you're going to pay like just so much of uh, uh, um, the broker is going to the broker is going to take all of the profit off this trade. It's just not worth doing. So what do we do? We size the position for our minimum value, which is three pips, and our position size drops in a third, but we leave our stop loss the same. So we're ri and our target is three times 1.1 is 3.5. So we're risking one pip to make three and a half pips. It's a, um, it's a much better trade to risk one pip to make three and a half pips um, than the other way around. It's an aggressive lot sizing. Yeah, it's well, it's not viable. It's not. It's not. It's a. It's a big mistake to to be that aggressive. Like a big, like a fatal mistake actually. Right, this has got a two pip spread, I assume. Well, I don't. I, uh, Euro USD. I don't use brokers that that. Uh, I, personally, I have a preference for um, brokers that don't charge with the spread, because you know a broker does. A broker does. What does a broker do? They buy million dollar lots on the interbank market. Everything's in one million dollar lots, and they break it down into into small chunks for retail traders like us. They charge a fee for that, which is perfectly reasonable. Yep. Also, in the market, there's a spread, a difference between what the buyers are willing to, to, to buy at and what the sellers are willing to sell at. So when a broker tells me, oh, we don't charge you any fees, but it's all built into the spread, what they're telling me is they're building in their fees to this other thing, and I can never quite work out how much they're charging me. And my experience is that when someone tells you that they're not charging you anything, they're fucking charging the fuck out of you, right? Like Facebook. Facebook, yeah. If you're not paying for the product, you are the product. And it's my experience that the vast majority of the, oh, we don't charge you brokerage, you can have it for free, guys, are just fucking you in, in egregious ways that, that it's really difficult to work out. Yeah, that's why I don't like uh, pending orders so much. That's why you don't like what, what orders, sir? Pending orders. Because uh, like they say, there's a there's a two point spread. I look at the chart and I'm like, so there was a, a three, three and a half point difference between where the market touched. And so why did it pick up my pending order? <laughs> right. When they when they claim that there's a two point spread. Right. So and, and there's a three and a half point spread uh, having a look back at the data and then where it picked it up. So like picked it up like a point and a half early. Yeah, I don't even know what any of that means. I don't trade with brokers to do shit like that. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, yeah. I, they, they would only do that once, and I'd, I'd like change my account to a real broker. Um, okay, so we're out of decreasing volatility. We have a potential set up here. It's in thirty seconds time. So let's check. The target has to be above here. So the entry point is forty three, and the stop loss is fifty two. It's nine, so 43 less 10 is 33, and that's here. So that's a uh, that's a setup. And fortunately, I know what the position size is. 
And so we're risking nine to make 10 because we're Bollinger Bollinger confirming evidence. And we're placing the order right now. Okay, so if this gets filled, which I kind of suspect it will, um, the entry is 43 and the target is 33, which is here. That's pretty reasonable target. Is there a reason you trade off a two minute chart? Um, yeah, that's kind of complicated. Um, so the goal of this system when, uh, when I was designing it was to be profitable on 70% of trading days. To be able to do that um, with the amount of time that I was willing to trade, unless I was willing to trade eight hours, I don't think I'm capable of, of trading at a high level for eight hours a day or willing actually to, to do that. And I don't know anyone who is. So let's, uh, let's take a normal day. Like a shitty day, like, like a an shitty inside day. day. Well, let's just take a you know a, a shitty day. You might take five trades, three winners, two losers, or six trades, three winners, three losers, um, four trades, two and two. Like those are pretty common sort of days, right? Like nothing burger days. If we're making at least one point one on our winning trades and sometimes two, and losing one on our losing trades. Let's say we have two winners, two losers, um, and we're up 0.2. Out, we're up 2.2, .2 and we're down, and we're down two. So we've made 0.2 R for the day. You know, brokerage and comms is going to eat that up. But you know, at least we've walked out, at least we've walked out away from the day break even. If you lowered the amount of trades, um, sorry, let me just adjust that order. Um, Okay, so I'm not going to place a new order. I'm just going to drag this up to there. Um, if you lower the amount of trades to the point where you're only taking one or two trades per day, luck has a greater, much, much, much greater influence on how this shit rolls. So let me show you what I mean. So you're taking one trade a day. It's entirely possible to have five or six losers in a row. Like, like I have that all the time. So um, if you're taking one trade a day, it'd be a perfectly normal thing to have five consecutive losing days. It'd be a perfectly, even with a high win rate, it'd be a perfectly normal thing to have um, four weeks in drawdown. Perfectly normal. Um, just because the way the maths work out. Whereas here, if you look at our equity curve, it's relatively like there's a, what are the worst drawdowns? 231 to 226. Should I better keep an eye on this trade? Um, this one, I'm going to reprep a new order. So the entry here is 45 and a half, and the stop loss is 52. That's six and a half. Yeah, I'm going to do a new order here. Um, I guess my. I, I just give me a sec, please. Okay. Of course, I was a big mouth current. I was.
So this is kind of interesting. Because I was a big mouth pre, I was uh, slow on the uptake. And this dipped to our order point and then rose up. So at the time when I placed my order, order was up here. So I had two choices. And both choices are equally valid, but I'd like you to, to pick one and stick with it consistently. So choice number one is you, you've been late on getting your order because you're a shitty trader like me, and it's up here. You can get a better entry. You can just jump in at market and, and, and save yourself a pip or two. Your target's closer. That's one way of doing it. Alternatively, you can say, I'll wait for the second pullback to the correct entry point, which is what I've done, which is, which is where I am. And... Uh, And what that gives you is if the market goes up here and then subsequently drops again to our entry point, it becomes a higher probability trade. And personally, with, with my trading goals and my income trading goals, like, you know, I trade other things for capital appreciation. My long-term systems are about capital appreciation and, and my crypto systems are about capital appreciation. This is about income. This, this system exists solely in a world of paying my bills every month. That's all it does. I'm, I'm not interested in trading it at a size that's bigger than just paying my bills every month and letting me do what I want and never have to tap into my trading accounts and, and, and just letting me live. So for that, I price high win rate and low drawdowns over everything. So if there's a, if there's a sophisticated choice to be made in, any, in anything, um, yeah, I go for the I go for the one that that uh, that suits my goal, which is what it is. Makes okay. sense. Um, Vincent, your broker has two charges, 0.6 pip, pip spreads, and and zero pip eight dollars per trade. Um, difficult to work out. Um, I need to take some time to figure that out. Um, but as a general rule, you can almost bet that they're um, that they're fucking you on the other one. Is is the way is the way that most brokers do it, just because most people here are free and they go for that one. They know they can build in extra charges. Um, let me just check the stops and targets here. So forty-five and a half and fifty-two. For seven, 38 and a half. Yeah, target is correct. Um, Vincent, your spread should not be a constant thing. Spread changes all the time during the day. Uh, and it changes according to it changes according to the market. So, for example, um, the first market to really start trading is the NZD pairs at the at the very start of the trading week, which is Sunday night in the USA. You might get forty or fifty pipettes, so four four pips spread in in very thin markets like NZD JPY um, at that particular time. But then, say during the actual market hours for those countries, the spread would go down to 0 0.2 or, or 0.3 of a pin. Typically, um, in New York session hours, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 for, you, uh, for Euro USD for most brokers. Um, on interactive brokers, I've never at any time ever seen Euro USD higher than a half, higher than 0.5 of a pip. Um, it depends if your broker's a real broker, like doing like doing actual brokerage, or if they're just like what's called a bucket shop, which is like a pretend casino where there's lots of lights and flashing shit, but you don't. But it's all just intended for you to lose money. If you're worried overly about that stuff, and some professional traders find FX markets distasteful for that reason, that every broker's different, and and some brokers play games, not all but a subset of brokers play games. If you're worried about that and that upsets you and it personally upsets me, trade futures. Futures, futures is different than FX in that it's much more heavily regulated. Every broker gets the same bid and ask spread and you can be on one broker and I can be on a different broker and I will see your bid and offer. 
So there's so there's no possibility of, of games playing with with any sort of futures market, and and uh, it's a lower comms basis too. There's downsides as well, but but. Yeah, it's a pros and cons situation, but um, I mean, I enjoy I enjoy FX now, but um, but in general, futures is a more serious serious buy market. Hey Scott. Hey, uh, oh Sekiran, how are you, mate? Hey, um. You you just mentioned future on new, so a future market, which can you just be more specific about that? Okay, so um, there's all kinds of different futures markets. So for example, yeah. this is the spot FX market on FX Yeah. Um, this, This is the euro dollar futures market. So you can see the chart looks very, very similar, almost the same. So this is um, this is your this is euro FX futures. And the position sizing calculation is different. You don't have to load up baby pips or whatever it is or a spreadsheet and calculate it out. Um, every half a pip is worth 12 bucks 50. On Aussie dollar, every pip is on Aussie dollar, every pip is worth is worth 10 bucks. That's how it works. Um, on New Zealand dollar, every pip is worth 10 bucks. So the position sizing um, becomes easy enough to do in your head. You know, you've got a three pip range. How much am I risking? NZV, USD, I'm risking 30 bucks. You can do it all in your head. So that's an advantage. The disadvantage is, is that FX works in, you can see this is a bit blockier. So the, uh, the low here is 53.0, 52.0. See how they're all round numbers? They, yeah. um, futures market only works in half pip increments. Whereas if we go back to, to Euro USD, you can see that there's, sorry, my data is delayed on futures because I don't have real time, real time data with this, uh, on, on futures with this. And I was like, back here, it's like 20 minutes delayed. Um, so whereas you can see here, there's a, a little bit more granular, granularity. It's a, it's a little less, it's a little less blocky. Um, yeah, that's not that's not the same with every market. Some of the um, some of the futures markets are, are, are very very liquid and extremely liquid. Like like uh, e mini futures, you could easily trade a hundred million bucks at the market most times. And on this trade here, Scott, um, how long do we leave it? Um, we leave it until it hits the target or until it uh, um, or until it stops us out or until we flick. There's a very rare thing that could happen. Actually, it could happen. It's very bad. Okay. If it makes the highest close in the trend, throws us into decreasing volatility mode and then paints a hammer candle touching the ADMA. It could outside chance that it's happening here. So let's watch for it. So the highest close in the trend so far is 48 pips. Here, the highest closing trend is 48.1. So we're in decreasing volatility mode as of the last bar. If this is a hammer candle and that hammer candle touches the ADMA, what will we do? We'll place an order to go long at the break of this hammer candle if it's touching the ADMA, which I don't think it will be, and it's not. But if it was, we would move our stop loss down to the high of this candle and prepare to get out of our short and get long. But right now we're in a trade. We, the rule is if you're, in, if you're in a short trade, you stay in the short trade until you either hit the stop loss, the target, or if you get a long trade, you take the long trade. Have, have you triggered the, this trade has, have you triggered already? Yeah, yeah, I, I triggered one, two, three, four, five, six bars ago. So 12 minutes ago, I think. Okay, so this is kind of an interesting thing, Sekran. Once you're in a trade, you want to pay as little attention to it as possible. You don't, 
you absolute in the strongest possible terms, you don't want to be riding it like a like a horse at the track. All that's going to do is fuck you later on. You do that once, and in an hour's time, you're like you've got this emotional high, and your parasympathetic nervous system cuts in, and you've got the emotional low. It's like like what happens when you get excited about something is have you ever seen two drunks in the bar? One like like one minute they're pushing and shoving each other, and you you throw the first punch. No, you throw the first punch. And then what happens a couple of minutes after that is you see them both, you're you're the best, mate. Let me buy you a beer. I'm so sorry. Like, like once all those emotions come out and the adrenaline kicks in, which is what happens when you get excited about a trade, adrenaline kicks in, your fight or flight instincts happen, and your stupid brain can't tell the difference between being chased by a tiger and and just watching a two-minute chart move around. All that happens is you feel this incredible come down. It's like a it's like a drug come down afterwards and you just won't want to trade in an hour's time and, and you'll turn into an idiot. What happens when you don't, when your subconscious doesn't want to trade and you're stuck here trading because trading's your job and you think you've got to do it because you've got to do your job and that's what they do. What happens is your subconscious will force you to stop trading by making you make mistakes. And so what happens is you'll make all these like noodle head mistakes that, and do stuff that you think you would never do. Like you'll just swear, I don't take trades like that. Like, and, never, and you'll look back the next day and go, the fuck did that happen? Like, I don't do shit like that. Like that's beginner stuff. What the fuck? And it's always like 99% of the time, it's because you've, you've allowed some sort of adrenaline to seep into your trading. And the, the surest way to avoid that is to just barely even look at it. Like I don't, you know, if I was in this trade and you guys weren't here on the call, I wouldn't even be in the room. I would have, I would have set an alarm and I'd be out having a snack. I'd go see my daughter, pick her up, um, stretch a little bit. Okay, so who thinks this trade is still good even though we're in a loss? It could be. I think it still looks okay. I mean, you can you can certainly make uh, uh, both bullish and bearish cases. So you know the move down for two bars, and the move up for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven bars. Eleven bars up isn't even equal to two bars down. You know which way is the easiest way for it to go. Yeah, Alex is probably right. It is a decrease in volatility up. So it probably is dead. Like the odds are against it. And Stephen, well executed is a good trade regardless of result. That's exactly right. Um, someone else had a question back a little while ago. And Alex is right. This is about to get stuck out. This looks fucked. Um, I was asking you a question earlier to do with uh say a two minute uh, chart over like a one minute or a five minute a one minute isn't quite viable even two minute is is kind of marginal if you're on a dodgy broker um so the smaller your r value the smaller your uh, that was stopped out by the way the smaller your uh the smaller your difference between your stop loss and your target the higher the position size the higher position size the, the higher the brokerage is and the greater percentage of the, of your profits is, is going to go to the broker, and beyond a certain point, that becomes um, a stupid thing to do because if the broker is taking on average more than you're making on average from the trade, you're just you're working for them, you're not working for you. So um, even two minutes can be can be sketchy if your broker says. So one minute totally not viable um, unless one minute would be viable if you say had a prime broker brokerage like a. Um, like an, there's a different level of, a, of brokerage above um, the sorts of uh, above this, which is called prime brokerage. And before they'll even talk to you, you need to have 20 million bucks and, and, and they don't pay, um, they don't pay much at all for trade. So it would be viable if, if you had a prime brokerage, but I don't know anyone, actually I know one guy who has access to prime brokerage and, and uh, yeah, so it's not a real thing in the real world. Not in our world, anyway. So. 
Okay. So I think that um, the answer is that the data is not accurate. Is that, no, no, is that what you're trying to say? No, I'm trying to say that. No. Okay. So you risk, um, let, let's say on one minute chart, the difference between your entry price and your stop loss is going to be smaller, right? On average than on a two minute chart. Two minute chart is going to be smaller on average than a five minute chart, right? Yep. So, oh, so okay. The smaller your risk, the bigger your position. So, check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not giving yourself enough space to move. So, let's say, um, let's say we're um, risking 100 bucks a trade with a three pip stop, our, our position size is $333,000. So, 3.3 bucks. The same thing on a seven pip. R value is under half that. It's only one hundred and forty-two thousand or one point two standard loss. The same thing. The same thing at two pips is five standard loss. So if you're taking five, if you're taking five lots instead of one point four lots, you're paying three times as much to the broker as as, as you would for those two trades. And it just become it just becomes a break on performance that's impossible to overcome. Okay, are we still in decreasing volatility mode? Volatility is lower than the previous high. So when did we go into decreasing volatility mode? We went in the close, it's 480. Here the close is 481, we went in here. And so, the highest ATR value in the trend or the nearest pivot too high is here. So we're still in decreasing volatility mode and we're still not taking this short setup if it appears, which it probably will appear. Could you explain the trigger for me again? We've had a Bollinger uh, pierce and then- we're getting, we're getting out of decreasing volatility mode or the trigger for the trade? the definition for a trend and then okay. from that it worked into two different triggers. All right. So most of the time we're stalking mean reversion trades going against the trend. Why? Yep. Because trends for a start happen very rarely statistically. They only happen 13% of the time. Um, so on average going against the trend is a higher probability bet. Higher probability is what we need if we want to have a high win rate. Trends only happen, you know, 13% of the time. Um, so we don't want to be taking going with the trend all the time on intraday charts, simply because there's a lot more noise than signal and, and all that stuff about the trend is your friend, um, only trade with the trend is bullshit when you, uh, um, when you run the maths on an intraday. So we have a methodology for switching from going against the trend to trading in the direction of the trend. Here's how the methodology works. To flip from mean reversion to trend following mode, we need to be trending. To be trending, it's a two-stage process. To start trending, we have touch of the upper Bollinger, and we need a single candle with a higher high than we've had since the Bollinger touch, and a higher close than we've had since the Bollinger touch. So on this bar, we have a higher high and a higher close. We start trending here. What stops us trending? One of three things. Two of them are irrelevant here, and a lower Bollinger touch is going to stop us trending or 20 bars without making a new high is going to stop us trending. So we're still trending up. Once we're trending up, while we're trending, if we make the highest average, if we make the highest close in the trend on a down tick in ATR 14. So here, we've made the highest close in the trend on an uptick. Here, we've made the highest close in the trend on an up, on a down tick. So we went into decreasing vol volatility here and then popped right out of it here. Here we pop back into it and we're still in it until we break this ATR value here. We're not taking any mean reversion trades. Now we have to be alert. If this is a hammer candle, we are taking it long. And so 
I want to keep an eye on the average true range value here. This average true range of 0 0.000300 means that the average pip size is, is three pips. So I want to prep an order based on just in case this triggers, because it's unlikely, but you never fucking know. And I'm going to prep it based on a three pip stop, just in case. And what this is going to do is it's stop, going to stop me getting surprised if this turns out to be a hammer in 40 seconds, if this is a hammer, I've got confirming evidence. I'm walking up the outside of the Bollinger. I've got confirming evidence. I'm walking up the outside of the Bollinger and the 10 too. If this is a hammer candle, I'm getting along. So I'm making my last double checks. The ATR value is 291. It's definitely definitely still in decreasing volume mode. Looks no, like no, a hammer no. now. We've got 15 seconds Come to on. go. All right. Come on. Okay, so I'm waiting until the bar closes and it's not a hammer, so I don't place the order. From Orjan, wasn't 348 a pivot high? Uh, the pivot high is in ATR, not in the, uh, um, not in price. Do you need me to understand that? Uh, explain that. Uh, if it was, yes, we'd be out of DV, but we're not. But it wasn't. Okay, Alex has a good question. Why was I prepping a three pip stop for the hammer trade? Okay, so these hammer candles are orders of magnitude more difficult to execute than the mean reversion trades. And why is that? Mean reversion trade, we get plenty of warning. Touch of the Bollinger, lower close, higher close. We've got six minutes of warning to see this fucker setting up. This thing, you don't even know that it's going to be a hammer until the last second. Like this was a hammer and then it's not. And and and, and you don't even, like they pop off super quick. And what, if you think about the nature of trends and pullbacks, have you ever seen a pullback be over and it just explodes to the upside? What we want to really avoid is the possibility of the market running away in the direction that we thought it was going to run, but without us position. That will break our fragile little hearts. So what we want to do is be prepared for that eventuality. How do you estimate the position size when you don't know the position size yet? What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the average true range when I'm in decreasing volume mode. And I'm going to say this ATR value of 0 0.000288 means that over the last 14 candles, we have an average position size, we have an average candle size of um, we have an average candle size of uh, of three pips. And so I would prep a three pip stop, three and a half pip target. And if it's not exactly right, if it's like a little bit out, then fuck it. You know, at least I've got my order on. I've got my order on at exactly the right time. This was delicious. So good. Uh, that was from 2010. Sounds good. Sure. Uh, it's in the recycling. Yeah. Now. Can people hear me? I got someone in the chat saying they can't hear. Yeah, good. Okay. I think it's you, Jose. Yeah, I can hear you. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so to pop us out of decreasing volatility mode, we need an average true range value higher than 301, which is 302 or above. We got to 300, but not 301. If this next bar has a lower ATR, then we've got a new pivot too high. And then this 300 becomes the amount that becomes the value that tosses us out of decreasing volume. So every time we make a new pivot too high, and a pivot too high is an ATR value with two lower values to the left of it and two lower values to the right of it. So we can't have a pivot too high until we have two bars to the right. Uh, Scott, may I ask a question? Of course you can, Stephen. 
uh, when we're placing these, uh, dealing with hammer orders, are we placing these, normally we use the uh, stop order. So I'm assuming these would go at market. No, no, no. You place or them limit. All, place them all as uh, stop limits is, is how I place them. Um, I place everything as kind of shit. Okay. Just place this order. So, see, and yep, that's, the, that's the beauty of, of having these orders prepped is, um, I fucked up. I wasn't paying attention. I was talking to you, and now because because I had an order prepped for the for the right size, I can just quickly jump in and place it. You see how that worked? Like I was completely not paying attention. This thing closed a hammer, and. Immediately, I've got the right order, and it's about to get a fill in a minute. Come on, you little bitch. Boom. OK. Scott, are we out of DV now? Uh, no. We are not, sir. On my data, we left DV mode uh, two bars ago. Yeah, same. Okay. It can easily happen if you, uh, if you have discrepancies between data. Um, so that's what the stop and the target looks like. It looks like it's going to hit it pretty comfortably. And you can see if we dig in a little bit to... Um, oh, sorry to interrupt. It's John. It's Hi, this John. one's a two, two hour target. Oh, shit, it is too. Thank you, John. I almost fucked up there. Thank you, sir. Okay, 52. And that would make it 55 and a half, right? Uh, I've got it at, yeah, uh, I've got the exact amount, 21541, so 54.1. Not okay. sure why that's different. Yeah. All right. Um, so what John saved me from embarrassment from doing is um, if this hammer candle touches the 21 EMA, we're going for a 2 hour target, moving stop to break even at 1 hour. Why? more of a snapback. It's perfectly reasonable to expect that, that this trade will get to here. Um, and uh, John actually did the work um, for us. He examined thousands of trades worth of data, manually went through the screenshots one by one, and he found that 83% of the trades of the hammer candles that touched the 21 EMA made a two R target, um, made a two R target. So, there was, there was, it didn't make sense to just go for one hour, to go for 1.1 hour when 83% of the ones that made 1.1 hour also made two hour. So it was an, it, it was an easy no brainer um, improvement to the system, which we do about once a year. And, uh, and John did all the work himself and he ought to be commended for that. Okay, Alex says on my data, that wasn't a hammer. Um, that's entirely possible. And, uh, all you can go off is the data that you have. So it's one of the reasons that people might prefer futures is everyone gets the same data. On FX, everyone's a little different. So there's two ways to do it. Um, way one is uh, I'm, I do something kind of weird. I, I take the setups off trading view so that so the trading view data is my umpire. And, and then I go and execute it on interactive brokers. Um, you might want to just have one platform, like there's like definitely that's probably the more technically correct way to do it. I don't know, there's something about this that I just find kind of easy. Um, other people have said the same. Uh, everyone's got to find their own path in this and there's pros and cons to both. Um, hey Scott, how you going? It's Howard. Hey Howard, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. I have a question. I'm using metadata, and as you told me before, I'd have to use that as my umpire for the data. My ATR 
uh, indicator is the Wilder ATR, which you recommended on your course, mm -hmm. but it's not as sensitive as the one that you use, I think to one decimal point less. Um, so with my indicator, it, it doesn't display as sensitive, but it does on the indicator dip up and down. Okay, but so might still read. You, have some, you have some choices there. You just go on the indicator that, uh, uh, just go on the data that's, that you've got on your screen. If it's not as sensitive, just just go on what you've got. Or you could go out and there's, there's a million third party uh, average true range indicators for, for MetaTrader. If you Google, you'll see like literally 50 of them. So you, you could go hunt down another one that's more to your liking, but really it's very little difference in the long term. So, so um, I increased the sensitivity on this after the group made the decision to do that. But, but I used a lower sensitivity for months and more than months, like nine months, and it never made a difference to my life. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat that at all. But just watching and trading with you live now, it's made a big difference in terms of if I'm in DB mode. Um, yeah, it does make a difference. Or Jen uh, uh, just said that ATR and MetaTrader is not implicated, not implemented per Wilder. He's, uh, he's absolutely correct about that. The, the default ATR in MetaTrader is this bullshit EMA smooth thing, which has nothing to do with what the guy who invented it defined it as. And, uh, and so there's a third party indicator that, um, that Howard is using that's on the prison paycheck system in the members section that you can download. Um, if we get a break in the action, I might just do some Googling and see if I can find a better one for you while we're here. Is it MetaTrader 4 or MetaTrader 5? MetaTrader 5. <laughs> I suppose the discrepancy Move. lies. It, like, the data might say zero 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 three zero, but visually, I can see with the curve it will dip slightly up or slightly down. So should I pay attention to the actual number if it's equal or should I pay attention to the visual indicator if it dips up? Um, if that makes sense. That's a good question. If you're comfortable seeing it visually, visual is fine. Um, if you're not, like my eyes aren't that good, I just go on the numbers. So it, these questions don't matter that much. What does matter and what matters a lot is that you're consistent. And, and consistency matters because um, Stephen has, Stephen said, I use Wilder ATR and MT5 set to 27, which gives the same curve as trading view. Um, St Stephen, would you mind, uh, do you want to share your screen and show how you do that? Just so that the other guys on. Sure, no problem at all, Scott. Sorry? No problems at all. All right, let me. Uh, let me stop share and then Steve, and then let me. Allow. You can share if you want. Okay. So I'm sure I can see that. Yeah. That can was... you see that, Scott? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So it's just a wall of ATR. Um, So basically, I use a 27 period with exponential smoothing and it gives the same curve. Um, and I've actually gone in and modified the um, MT5 program so it gives the six digits as well. And I think I posted that on the Platinum group. So, um, sorry, what what did you po what did you post there? So on, on okay, so the wilder ATR or most of the MT5 ones are only to five decimal places. Mm -hmm. So I actually went into the program, modified it to give me the six, and I posted that modified program to the platinum group, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'll post it. I'll I'll post that to the other group today because uh, um that's really great information and, and great work, man. Thank you. No worries. All right. Yeah, that's really useful to me, Stephen. Thanks. I mean, to me, that's really fucking cool that we've got a community of people that are trading this and and uh, 
yeah, and figuring it all out. God, uh, yeah, I think I think that's great. So, the thing I'd want to point out is that while we're talking, we haven't talked about this trade that we're in at all. Like that, as a core value, we want to we want to really keep our attention for our job. Like our job is taking the setups as they appear. We don't want to, we don't want to have our attention distracted just because it's exciting because we're in a trade because it's not exciting. Okay, so at some point we're gonna to have to move this stop to break even. So we moved the stop to break even at one R. The entry point was 48. So our, uh, our move to break even is at 51. So we, so our stop, so I should move my trade to break even right now. Which I'm gonna do. Good. Okay. So we might hit two R, or a worst case scenario, we stopped out for break even. And let's not forget that um, we're we're zero from one today. So far, we, we're we're down one R. And if this trade hits the goal, then we'll have a one hour loss and a two hour win. Questions? Is someone who's using MT4 able to explain how to get a two minute chart? I'm having a one minute and five minute option that I can see. Um, there's an external indicator that you can download that does it. It's kind of a collage. Um, okay, even, I'll check it out. If you if you go to the um, if you go to the member section of the of um, if you go to if you go to your member section, it's all, it's in there. There's a section called MetaTrader Indicators. And it's in there. Richard Foster says it's called period one. converter script in MT4, period converter. If you just Google period converter MT4, you'll find it. Yeah, I think I've got that in my... Uh, so thanks. Sorry, sorry, Scott. Just while I've got you, I've got one more question for you regarding trending. Sure. Happened to me yesterday. Um, I got a, a touch of the Bollinger Band. Now, I know I'm looking for a, a higher high and a higher close in the same bar but it didn't happen until about five or six bars later. Ah, that very point, interesting situation. And this is what- didn't this is break what the Bollinger. So, so if you consider here, we have a touch of the Bollinger. If we make a higher, higher, higher close, it's obvious, right? Like here we touch the Bollinger, we made a lower, lower, lower close straight away. Some, most of the time, this is what happens, but sometimes it fucks around. So we've got a higher high, but not a higher close. We're not trending. What starts us trending is we need a new higher high than this new high and a new, new higher close than the highest close we've had. Haven't got it. Haven't got it. Okay, now we've got a higher close, but not a higher high. What makes us trend? A higher high than here and a higher close than here in the same bar. Boom, right there. Do you need me to do a few more? No, no, but even if it doesn't break the Bollinger um, the second time around, as long yeah, as even if it does, that, that's a very important point. It can, like, uh, it can happen even without touching the Bollinger the second time. Because don't forget the, and 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 this is an important point. Okay, we stopped out for break even. Um, If you're, if you're confused or wondering about the rules, a really good way to think about it is what do the rules say in a literal sense? If you wanna know what I think about the rules, just imagine you were like the dumbest version of me you could possibly imagine reading the rules literally. So if, if the rule says, one touch of the Bollinger, two, a single candle with a higher high and a higher close. 
that rule doesn't say anything about it, it has to touch the Bollinger or not the second time. Um, so don't worry about it. If the rule doesn't say it, don't worry about it. Um, and any sort of arguments we have about the rules, we resolve in the group and we resolve them by reference to what the rules say. And sometime, sometimes a literal version, literal reading of the rules gives a weird outcome. And that's just the way. Okay, thanks. Okay, so you can see it's good that we uh, moved our stop to break even because this is probably going to stop us out here. Um, it's not stopped, it wouldn't have been stopped out yet. This trade looks pretty shifty. Um, Arnold, high and tight, most of the time, the vast majority of the time, high and tight means a maximum target, maximum 1.1 R target of the lowest law in 25 bars, counted back from the Bollinger Tension. The Bollinger, so, so um, we count back from the Bollinger touch, not including the Bollinger touch and go one, two, three, four, five, and so on and so on. And I think that's a maximum target of here. For longs, the only exception is when you have what we, what we would regard as an unequivocal uptrend. And an unequivocal uptrend is something like this, where none of us could possibly have any argument that we have an uptrend. And it's not the, it's not our, our trending definition of uptrend or not. It's just like the, we're very strongly biased to thinking that um, the highest high and lowest low in 25 bars uh, are our maximum targets. If you're in a really strong trend like this, what we call an unequivocal uptrend that no one could have an up, no one could say that's not an uptrend, like no one in the world, like that's just an uptrend. Um, this is a comparatively rare situation. And in this situation, like here, the maximum target would be just past the 21 EMA. So about here. Now, people tend to get hung up on this, but back in the real world, it's not that big a deal because if you think about it, um, mean reversion setups are only uh, uh, are only seventy five percent of the system. Of those mean reversion setups, it's almost impossible to get a high end type that's controversial with a with a Bollinger trending confirmation, or walking up the Bollinger confirmation, or a trending trending confirmation. So that leaves about half the trade, half of the of the seventy five percent of trades that are potentially problematic. Of those remaining trades, at least 65% of them are just highest high, lowest low in 25 bars. And of the ones that are an unequivocal uptrend, which is the remaining ones, most of them are either so far out, it's ridiculous, like you don't even need to think about it, or they're clearly within bounds. The ones that are controversial, like, like around with targets around here, 10, 15% max of Bollinger Bollinger trades, which are again as a small subset of the pie. So it's in practice, as an algo trader, it's a real pain in the ass. Um, uh, none of the algo traders that I know have come up with a satisfactory definition. Everyone has their own different ideas of them. They all suck. Um, I haven't adopted any, I've seen 20 different algo traders definitions of high and tight. And I could have adopted any of them and I haven't adopted any of them, even though I don't, even though it's kind of shitty the way we do it, but I haven't adopted anyone else's version because it doesn't get a better result than what we do now. Um, and it, it's not that big a deal as a manual trader. As an algo trader, it's a big deal. Okay, are we still in decreasing volume mode? The ATR is still decreasing. Yeah, and higher to my own. Yeah, if this is your TV zone, Scott. Thank you, Sherry. How are you, man? I'm good, Scott. How are you? Yeah, I'm having a good day. A good day. A very productive day of work yesterday. Nice to see the baseline up to date. And it's nice trading. And also, Scott, what well, I did. Uh, uh, we need to go uh, to the baseline for a couple of trades when we find time. 
she'll, as soon as we're out of DV, let's do that. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Thank you, Orjan, who says that the best period converter he's found is P4L period con 509. There you go. Um, I'm going to save that. Not sure where I got mine. Came with some robot that I have. So if we break this ATR value 298, we're out of DV. So that would be 299 or above. Each time your chart draws an S, what does that indicate? That is hammer or shooting star, and you can get that by going search for capital HG and this one here by Autarch Capital, HG Scalpius HNSS Scan. Um, thanks to my man, Joseph, who was one of my earlier students. From Lee, was Scott just explaining that defining an uptrend and no, an uptrend is not difficult. Um, what is difficult for algo traders is defining the maximum risk of a setup before you before you abandon it. And uh, yeah, it's a big, long, complicated spiel. And and uh, um, yeah, it's it, it's not really an issue for us. But algo traders have to uh, um, have to find some way of dealing with it. And, and of the, I mean, I've seen a lot of different methods of solving it and, and none of them are satisfactory. Really good question, Alex. If the uptrend ended, can we still be in decreasing volatility mode? So we resolve all questions about the rules by the literal reading of the rules. So the rule says we go into DV mode if we're already trending and we have the highest close in the trend on a downtick in ATR. The rules say we stop being in decreasing volatility mode when we break a pivot too high in ATR, which is this, or we make the highest ATR value in the trend, which is this. None of that mentions if we're still trending or not trending. None of that is in the rules. So if it's not in the rules, all of the problems that people have in learning this system are from doing these like mental models that like, oh, but I thought that it had to be like, why would you fucking think that? It's not in the fucking rules. Like, like I get 20 questions a week where someone said, oh, but doesn't this have to be like that? Like, is it in the rules? No. Then why would you fucking think that? And I get it again and again and again. And the simplest way to learn the system and the way that you will never forget it is to read the rules and, and read them in the simplest possible way. Like it's very tempting to apply these models of, in your head of, of like, this means this means this means that. And nine times out of 10, none of that shit is true. The rule says for a mean reversion setup, we can't be in decreasing volatility mode and we need a touch of the Bollinger, a lower close and a higher close without breaking this bar. 
that's the rule. As long as we, as long as we stick to the rules, we're good. This is a very good question, Alex. So if we go into a downtrend now, we don't automatically go into a decreasing volatility down. We can go into decreasing volatility down if we start down, don't forget, what puts us into decreasing volatility mode is if we're already in a trend and we get the lowest close in the trend on a down tick in ATR. So if we start trending down, we don't automatically go into decreasing volatility down at that point. In fact, we stay in decreasing volatility up. If we are trending down and then get the lowest close in the trend on a down tick in ATR, then we're in decreasing volatility down. Subtle but important point. Because if you think about it, if we touch the lower Bollinger here, I still, this as this right now, if we touch the lower Bollinger and paint a long trade, very appealing long trade. I want to be on that. Vincent, you can uh, on trading view. You can go precision and change it and, and get more digits. Um, I started off using the defaults and then the group started uh, group decided to, to raise it to six digit precision. Um, Scott, raising it to six pips of precision was a good decision. I believe so. I think it's good. Yeah, because I, I was having some conflicts with you when it comes to this ATR. I remember in the in the first yeah, or second month of my trading. I remember too. I, I, I think it's a I think it's a um I can't remember whose idea it was. It might have been Chris Ryan. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. But it wasn't mine. But whoever's idea it was is fucking good. So Alex points out that a hammer is forming. Don't forget that our hammer candle has to touch one or both of the EMAs to be a valid setup. Possible, but unlikely. And this is another weird situation where a lot of people would say, oh, but don't the EMAs have to be like blue one on top, red, purple on bottom? It's like, do the rules say that? No, they don't. So. I think I might have got a bit lost here, Scott, but if a hammer candle did form there and it did touch the EMAs, how would that be a test? Okay, so the rule says if we're in the increasing volatility mode, we're no longer trending. So the rule says if we're in decreasing volatility mode, which we are, and we get a hammer candle touching one or both of the EMAs, which you know we didn't, but we might have, and we have long confirming evidence on the five, and we have long confirming evidence on the 10 when we take the trade. Do we have long confirming evidence on the five? We have an uptrend with pullback and moving evidence, quick. Do we have a pull, do we have a confirming evidence on the 10? We have an uptrend on the 10 with pullback and moving average. So we, we definitely have all the elements of the system. We didn't have a hammer candle, obviously. So even though we're not technically trending because we're still on yep. EV. Even though we're not trending. And the reason I left it like that is because it's it's always tempting to put in an extra rule to cover this weird situation that you've never seen before. And then what you end up, have you ever had a, a trading system that um, your back test says you're going to make a lot of money and then it fucks up in the real world and your back test and your forward test match up? Almost every time that that happens, it's because you've got too many rules. In. So the greatest, we have a thing, we have a thing that works. That's a working thing. 
over 15, 1,600 trades. The biggest danger in our whole lives is that we overcomplicate this thing and turn it into a fragile system and fuck it up. And that would be a tragedy. So we have to jealously guard any, all the time students are wanting to put in a new rule to cover this weird system and a new rule to cover that, that weird situation. Every rule comes with a price. That price is in fragility. The more rules we have, the more the the more you know the the more influence luck has on them. Like it's unlucky that it triggered this rule, or lucky that it didn't. And and when you get different types of luck interacting together, it happens in weird ways. And so, what we want to do is, if that weird situation happened one in one in every couple of hundred trades, and it wasn't really a trade that I'd want to take, but it fits the system rules, and we take it anyway. Does that materially impact the system results? It doesn't really affect us much at all. Like, you know, so it's a so you take one shitty trade every couple hundred trades. It's better than adding a rule. Every rule costs you. Okay, because I've heard you say many times before with DV mode, you're in it until you're out of it. So as long as we're in DV mode, the hammers and the shooting stars. As long as we're in, in DV mode, uh, uh, hammers and shooting stars, exactly so. Um, Paul, you don't need these annotations. Um, I didn't use them for the longest time. I thought it was intellectually lazy. Um, you can just recognize them. The definition of a shooting star is a candle with an upper wick equal to or greater than two times the real body. The real body is the colored bit, black or white, 
So, so here it's obvious that the upper wick is equal to or greater than two times the real body. And we have a cl close in the lower half of the range. So the shooting star definition, upper wick equal to or greater than two times the real body, which is the colored bit, and a close in the lower half of the range. Hammer candle, lower wick equal to or greater than two times the real body and a close in the upper half of the range. So generally you can recognize this. Like if I, if I take these fuckers off the, uh, if I take these fuckers off the chart, we go, okay, hammer, shooting star, hammer, 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 shooting star, shooting star, shooting star, shooting star, shooting star. You see what I mean? You don't, uh, you don't technically need them and it is a bit lazy to use them, but um, I've gotten used to being lazy. Uh, Bernard, yeah, I'll, I'll throw the recording up there. Yeah, Andrew, I uh, I grudgingly I grudgingly agree with you. Like, uh, um, yeah, it certainly saves brain power. It's certainly a good idea. Um, I resisted it for the longest time and and hung shit on everyone who wanted to do it. And and uh, yeah, I was wrong. Uh, I'm on. What are the settings of the two EMAs? The EMA is eight and 21 exponential, and the Bollinger is uh, the standard uh, 20 period two standard deviation. And it's not that there's anything magical about those. It's they're just like the ones that I used for another system and I didn't even bother testing other values. So it's entirely possible that there's a better value. Um, I don't think it makes any difference at all. Vincent, high and tight is a very interesting concept. Um, someone tell me if we get a, a, a setup here. Let's consider a couple of different setups. This setup here, touch of the Bollinger, higher close, lower close, long here, stop loss here. Our target is really about here. It's a very easy target to hit, right? Very small range in here means that the target is very close by, it means our position flows is large. That's an ideal setup. Let's find one that's a bit different. Okay. See here we have touch of Bollinger, higher close, lower close. Our Let's see the way that it would have looked in real time. Our entry here, our stop loss here, our target would have been way up here. That is a fundamentally different sort of a setup to take. The setup is a, the, the, uh, um, the, target is, the target is a long way away. It requires a complete reversal. Um, compare and contrast to this one, touch of the Bollinger, lower close, higher close. The target is here. It doesn't require us to go into a downtrend. It just requires a little dip in an uptrend. We hit the target, no big deal. So what we want to avoid is, one of the reasons why the system performs so well is that we're not just blending a million different types of setups and saying that's an edge, that's an edge, that's an edge, let's throw them all in the soup. 
Because what happens when you when you make a soup of your setups when you're building trading systems is that you have luck, and and luck is not your friend in trading. So um, so the reason our system performs so very well is that because most of our setups are very very similar. You can see that a mean reversion setup in an uptrend with a very tight range. Um, this one is pretty much similar to this one to what was the other one to this one, which was the last one we looked at. Um, and because things are similar, they tend to behave similar. It makes logical sense. And when and even if something technically fitted the rules, if they weren't really the same trade, like if we consider one that's really, really way out there, it's hard to find. Like this one here, we have a touch of the Bollinger, higher close, lower close, entry here, stop loss here, target is all the way up here. So if you look at most of our trades, we're, we're in and out within 20 minutes, right? But this trade with the target up here would require you to stay in, whether or not you hit it or not, you didn't hit it, but it would require you to stay in for two or three hours. Now, a trade that you're in for two or three hours is a fundamentally different animal than a trade that you're in in 30 minutes. So one of the one of the reasons the system is so consistent and so smooth and so reliable and so stable is because our shit is all the same. They're roughly the same trade, roughly the same. If you look at if you look at our uh, pips that we're risking, let's go down to the last month, and you'll see. You know, which we're, we're trying to make things that are roughly the same. Um, yeah, and if you know, you cut all the pieces of meat in the stew the same size, and they'll cook at the same at the same rate, and hopefully you'll have a nice tasting soup stew. And and if you start putting weird shit in to your mix, then then one day you're going to have some of these long range setups, and then other days you're going to have some of these short range setups. And your system is going to behave schizophrenically. It's going to behave totally different from one day to the next or one week to the next. And what that causes is, is times when you just look at it and go, what the fuck is going on with this? Like, you know, we're trading a trend following system and, and we've got trends and why are we losing money? And it's a big trap, a trading system. Building. So it's time for us to check a couple of things. Are, are we still in decreasing volatility up? Yes, we are. We've never broken this high. We've got a new pivot too high, which is here. So if we hit this, which we're unlikely to, it's going to throw us out of a decreasing volume. You can see we have a mean reversion set up with this shooting star, but we have no confirming evidence and we're in decreasing volume. No worries, Richard. No worries at all.
Uh, Vincent, high and tight is, if we consider this tra this trade here, touch of the Bollinger lower goes high and tight. We're in decreasing volatility, but ignore that. High and tight is a maximum target above the lowest low in 25 bars. So it's so if the 1.1 R target is above here, then it's high and tight. Uh, Simon, I don't think Trader Day does FX. Scott, can we check out this, those trades on the base sign? Yeah, sure. Which ones? I'll keep an eye out for the hammers. So you don't have to worry about that. Thank you, man. It's uh, uh, 4th of uh, February, 7.32. Seven thirty. Seven thirty-two. Four. Let's have a look. Um, unless we're in decreasing volume. Okay, I'm going to load that up. Um, from memory. Yeah. <laughs> 
<coughs> the memory was critical close just before that, but let's check. So, um, are we trending down? We're trending down from this bar. Three, five, six, three, five, five. We're in. We're in decreasing vola. I thought it popped out, but no, hang on. Oh, yes. Okay. This is interesting. We don't start trending. We start trending down here. We have a close above, close below, close above. So we stop trending. Ah, we start trending again from this bar. Sorry, I thought we started trending from this bar. No, you're right. So, um, so we're in decreasing volume. So that's no trade, right? Yeah, and we got a shooting star. So this is really challenging thing to do. Oh, at, at seven thirty. Okay, so let's. Yeah, so let's, I, I took it actually. Wow. Okay, so let's look at the confirming evidence of the shooting star, and let's uh, let's change that shit around. All right. So we're in decreasing vola. We've got a shooting star, and we're walking down the Bollinger on the, the shooting star is at seven thirty-two to seven thirty-four. And we're walking down the Bollinger on the five. We're definitely trending. Um, lowest close in the trend, not on an uptick. Do we have a close below, close below, above, and close below? So we stop trending at 650. And where is the trade? Seven. 32. So we stop trending down at 650. We touch the upper bond. So we're not trending down. So um, 732. We have no confirming evidence. No. Uh, I'm sorry, Scott. Uh, where do you say we stop trending down again? Ah, it's not close we, below, close we, above. We it's close above, a... below, above. Okay, so okay, so we are trending. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, yeah. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Actually, we stop trending here. So our low is here. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, and we make new lows. Okay, so we are trending down and at 7.32, we have a pullback and it touches the moving averages. Good trade, good trade, very tricky yeah. trade. Let's add that in. That's what I said, this is really, really hard to do. That's really hard, really hard. Yeah. Um, you ought to give yourself a real attaboy for finding that. <laughs> I mean, that's trading at a black belt level. I, I couldn't, I couldn't one hundred percent be certain I was I would get that. One point one nine eight five five. One point one nine eight eight. It's it's a minimum viable art trade. Yeah, it's a minimum. It's a minimum viable at 2.5 pips, right? And it's minus 0.83 R and the ATR is 0.00311. And we are Trend and trend and new screenshot there. Thank you. Really well picked up, man. Impressive. Yeah, and, and, and then uh, another one on the next day, on the fifth. What time? 7.52. Oh, and Sheree, can I just um, jump in, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. Can, can you explain to me what, what was... Um, 
you know, what was the... the that was super tricky. So let, me, let me go through it for everyone because that's um, something that everyone's going to struggle with. So, we touch the lower Bollinger, we start trending here. Sorry, we start trending here. This is the highest close in the trend, uh, the lowest close in the trend on an uptick, 356 is the ATR value. Lowest close in the trend on a downtick, we go into decreasing volume. Uh, so Hang up, you might get a long setup. This is, this Sorry? Is you might get a long setup, but I'm, I'm kind of just forming. Right. Let's do it. Wait a second. Um, yeah, this could easily be a setup. Okay, so um, okay, this looks like it's going to be a setup. Okay, and placing. Um, Andrew, Oanda have to have a two-tiered uh, commission structure. I uh, I had a student, Jeffrey, who is using them, and um, their fees and spread were crap until he called up and complained, and they put him on a higher tier of like they call it pro trader or some shit like that. Um, okay. So you want okay. you you want to make sure that you're on the, whatever their good tier of. A lot of these retail brokers, they have like. If you just sign up, like I want to sign up, give me an account quick, they give you a really yeah. fucked situation. And and if you actually know what you're doing, they'll give you more. Okay. And and does, does your student use it and get good results now? I'm, I'm, he trades a variant of my system, so I I don't know about his results. It's really quite. Okay. He started off with mine, and it's really quite different than mine now. Okay. Sure. Um, Great. Thanks. Yeah. All right, so this is kind of interesting, actually. So we'll, uh, if this, if we can leave this order in the same place, so the nearest half pip is 553.5. The high here is 549, so our nearest half pip is 550. So we have to cancel this order, and I better do it quickly before it gets triggered, um, which can be annoying when you miss out on a trade, but. If this was a real hammer candle that's going to like rocket up, it would have already rocketed up. You know, the fact that it's broken the low of this candle is already starting to make it stink. Um, and we have a new, do we have a new pivot too high? Let's have a look. Yes, we do. So we have a new pivot too high all the way down here, and we're about to have another one here. So we're very likely to pop out of decreasing volatility mode. If we pop out of decreasing volatility mode, we're gonna have a short setup. No, we're not, because this isn't touching the bond during the turn. Uh, or Jan, it's both, both EMAs. I'm sure you what what was the next day? Yeah, uh, it was on 5th of uh, February. What time? Uh, 7:52. All right. Um
highest close in the trend on a downtick in ATR. We're in decreasing vola. What throws us out of decreasing vola? 249 or above. 248, we're still in decreasing vola. Still in decreasing vola. Still in decreasing vola. The low here is 72 and the low here is 70. So that trade is now triggered. Actually, it was triggered here. So the second bite of the cherry, cherry rule applies. And even, and we popped out of decreasing vola here, too late, so no trade. I believe I was, I was thrown out of TV on my platform. Okay. Um, it, uh, yeah, I've only got the data. Uh, that the, the pivot to the high at 724 is broken for me at 734. 730. Yeah, that is fine. Sorry, this one here. What was your ATI value? Uh, seven at, at sorry, my, my pivot to high was at 724. The ATR value was 248. And this is a double 248 there and 248 here, right? Yeah. So that's an equal top. Yeah. Which an equal top doesn't throw it out of danger. Yeah, I was at 249, I believe, at 734. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not like that. Yeah, I think that's a different when it comes to yeah. uh, The other one is on 9th of February, 550. Five fifty. All righty. So five fifty. Um, first of all, we want to figure out are we in decreasing volume mode? Um, and it seems likely that we are. So if you want to work out if you're in decreasing vola mode from a long way back, you find the highest ATR value in the trend and start looking for highest close in the trend afterwards. So this is kind of annoying. So the close is 989. We have to find closes above it. 992. We're in decreasing vola mode from here. Pivot too high. Pivot too high. Pivot too high. We're still in decreasing vola mode. Still in decreasing vola mode. Still in decreasing vola mode. Still in decreasing volume mode. Still in decreasing volume mode. Still in decreasing volume mode. No trade. Sorry, uh, uh, I'm I'm talking about five, uh, uh, five fifty. At five fifty, we're in decreasing volume mode still, from all the way back here, and because of that, we don't we don't take short mean reversion trades. No, no, it's a, it's a hammer at 550. Oh, sorry, 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 I didn't notice. Didn't notice. Okay. Then it's likely that that is a trade. Okay, 550. Definitely pull back on five. Definitely pull back on 10. Yeah, that's a valid trade. Set it in. Again. It's the ninth of it February. was another minimum viable. Um, and 550, right? Yeah. Uh, Nick, I don't, uh, I don't think we're out of PV. It, it is still... Yeah. Um, One point two one one zero, one point two one zero. Um, Nick, you still 
Wow, so it's only a pip and a half range. So that is. That's, that's one pip stop loss. Um, just as in, just in, was it one pip as a stop loss? It was one for me. I took it for one. Uh, ten and eight and a half. The pip and a half for me. Um, um, so that is minus point. point five, and the ATR was. Thanks, man. Any more? I say, Scott, if, um, if you're still trading, there's a just got a hammer just a second ago, away. Eh? Um, not quite. No, it, it is almost, but uh, it, it was forming. Scott, we got two more. Sure. Uh, on tenth. Sorry, 10th, 448th, 10th of February. All right, see, 448. Okay, I signed 25 bars. Um, unless we're in DV, which we can't be. No, that's a valid trade. Did he hit the target? Yeah, he did. I'm sorry. You you said it was a what? It's a good trade. Uh, I, I believe that is not in the baseline. It okay. didn't hit the target. Sorry? It was stopped out. It didn't hit the target. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 10th of February, 448. Yeah. Now this was a bit, a bit. Uh, I, I wasn't really sure about this, so I wanted your opinion on this too. Um, let, let me just, let me just get this one out. Actually, tenth. Yeah, I've got this in the baseline already. Tenth uh, of February, four forty-eight. Yeah, yeah. So, so I want you to uh, because. You took it at uh, uh, you took it at four fifty eight, not four forty eight. Okay, yeah, same difference. Loser either way, right? No, no, it, it was a winner. It was a winner if you were to take, take it at four fifty eight, but if you were to take it at four forty eight, it was a loser. I got it at four forty eight as a loser. That's what I've got it. Oh, I'm sorry. You got it at four forty eight as a loser. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, yeah, yeah. Now now at four uh, uh, at four fifty eight. So I mean I was a bit confused when because I mean high and tight. What would you say? Would you say oh, I'm I'm it? being a cunt there. It's not a. I'm 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 an idiot. That that four fifty eight shouldn't be there because we're in that trade. Sorry, that's my bad. It's just me. No, that's not good at all. Sorry, that's you're right. So I, I must have walked away from the screen, walked back, saw this, and thought, "Oh, that's a setup," and forgetting that we're already in the setup. Yeah, yeah. So you basically had two trades at at four forty eight and four fifty eight in the baseline, right? So yeah, yeah. That, that confused me. I'm sorry. Uh, and the next one is at twelve seven forty. Twelfth, seven forty, right? Yeah. 
Decreasing volume. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to go get some dinner. I'm starving. So uh, thank hey, you very Cole. much. Thank you very much for turning up today. And uh, yeah, um, guys in the Platinum Group, I'll see you on the weekend call. And yeah, cool day's training. Enjoyed it. See you guys. Thanks, Go. Be well.